Hey Wompers, this is Tim, better known as Saku. I'm a 3D artist and content creator here at Womp. And in this video, I'm going to teach you everything that you need to know on how to get started with your very own 3D journey using Womp. So this is where we're at once we open up a new file. By holding down the left mouse click, we can rotate around our object. Holding down the right mouse click allows us to pan in different kind of directions. When we use the scrolling wheel on our mouse, we can zoom in or zoom out. When combining all three together, we can easily move around and navigate with control. This right here is a lovely little starting example of how Womp works by combining simple primitives, blending them together, which we call gooping, or subtracting from each other, we can create more complex looking shapes all in real-time workflow. Now, if we have a look at the top left, this is where we have our primitives in a layering system. Right now, they're all grouped together into one union, which is a group that allows us to move objects all together at once. What we can also see here is this red circle next to the sphere. This indicates that it's a negative object subtracting from the others. What's really smart about this system is that it will only subtract from the primitives above. So if we simply drag it above the cube, it won't subtract from it anymore. For now, let's delete those and have a look at our top bar. Here we have primitives, lights, backdrop, materials and functions. We'll have a look at all of these options in a bit, but for now, let's get started with our primitives. For now, we have three simple primitives to start from. There's more to come and additionally, we can also add community-made models to our scene if we want to. For now, let's get out a new primitive and have a look at how we can navigate that using our gizmo. The first thing you will see is those arrows. We can use them to navigate along the three axes. Additionally, you can also use the buttons to more freely use along two axes at the same time. When we drag from the center, we can resize from the center, keeping its position. Additionally, you can also grab one of the corner points and resize more individually. What we also see at the corners is those three arrows that allow us to rotate around the axes. When a primitive is selected, it will open up its properties menu on the right. Here we can make all kinds of changes. For example, we can use the numbers to more accurately change the size, rotation or position of our object. On the top of the properties menu, we have this really awesome function where we can simply replace our primitives with one another while keeping its position. Another really helpful and useful function is the roundness amount. This lets us round up our primitives even that much that we can bring it back to a sphere. Below that we straight away have the goop strength, which is our blend amount. Let me show you a little example by bringing out a sphere that blends together with our rounded cube. Here you can see by changing the goop strength we can create completely new shapes and objects. Of course, you can also bring it back to zero and just have a clean cut. On the top, you can change from positive to negative to subtract from objects. The goop strength works the same way with our negative objects. Below that, we have the option to activate the mirror mode and then we come to our material section. Here we can make very quick changes to color, metalness, roughness, transmittance and translucency, which even allows us to create awesome looking glass materials. But for now, let's just select our cube, change it to a more blue tone and see how that metalness looks on it. But now, what I would really like to show you is how you can create your own materials that you can apply to primitives as well as whole unions. For that, let's get out a new sphere and then let's have a look at our top bar. Here we have our material section. 
Once you open that up, you will see a bunch of materials that we have already pre-created for you that you can simply drag onto your primitives or unions. But for now, let's click on the plus icon at the top so we create our very own that you can save and just add to anything you want. Once we create that, it is applied to our sphere and here we can quickly make a change to color and all the other things that we want to. In case you click somewhere else and don't know how to get back, you just simply go back to the material section and there your material is already saved and you can edit your material which will make changes all in real time to all the objects you've applied it to. If we turn up the material slider and have roughness on zero, there will be a very strong reflection on the surface of our object. This is actually a skybox image which is reflected and that we can make changes to. If we turn up the roughness, it will obviously be less reflective and less shiny. And we also have transmittance and translucency materials which allow us to make glass and more glowing materials. More about that in another tutorial, but for now, let's come to the lights and environment panel. Here we can turn off the floor grid and experiment with lights as well as the global lighting, which is the skybox image that I've just talked about. If we click on change lighting, we have a bunch of different options and images to choose from. This changes your scene and materials completely, so I highly recommend you to try around with that. Just below that, we also have the option of exposure, which affects the brightness of our scene, as well as how our materials and reflections are affected by the global lighting. Additionally to the global lighting, we can also add our very own lights to it. For that, we go back to the top bar and open up the second menu. Here we have rectangular, spherical and dome lights that we can add to our scene. Once you add a light, it will appear on the top right at the lights and environment panel where you can make changes to it like change its color, its exposure or how big the light is as well. One more thing that we can change is our background color. For that, let's go back to the top bar and choose the third menu, which is called our backdrop. There's a few colors that you can just click on to select them, or you can just choose a color for yourself from the color wheel. Now, I believe it's one thing to show you and explain to you all of the functions that are available for you at WOM, but I think it's another very important thing to actually see the tools in action and know how you can create something with it. So that's why I would like to present to you the process on how I made this lovely stylized little mushroom character. And I really hope it gets you inspired to get started on creating something in WOMP. And after that, I will explain to you how you can render out your images, share them with our community and how you can connect with us. So stay tuned. Hope you guys enjoy.
I really hope you guys enjoyed this little time lapse of the creation process. And now that we have our finished model, what can we do with it? There's a few different options we have, but you will be able to find all of them at the top right by clicking the share button. Here we can see that we can record a video, download the image, download a 3D model or publish our projects. By clicking on the download image button, it will lead us to where we can render it. We can render our images from 4K to HD and different kind of social media formats. To note here is that a 4K render will obviously take a little bit longer than a full HD render and that it will render out what's currently displayed on your screen. From here we can also straight away go to the download 3D options. Here we can export our models for other engines with different kind of formats or for 3D printing. We also have the option to change the compression rate here. And lastly, we can publish our projects to the community, to the discover page. We can choose our title, add some hashtags, choose the thumbnail by clicking on square, portrait or landscape mode. And we can also decide if we want other people to be able to duplicate and remix this project. And we can also disable that they can even make images from it. So it can be completely your creation without others using it if you would like to. And yeah, this is your head start into WAMP. I really hope it helps. And if you should have any more questions, feel free to join our Discord server where there's always someone there to answer your questions, where you can also connect with the community and share what you make in WAMP. We would be happy to see you and you can find all the links in the description down below. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching and happy WAMPing.